Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Beth, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Penny. I'm with the Institute of Culinary Education, and I've been a chef for 15 years. This is my easy enough apple crumble pie recipe. That's a trademark name. The best time to eat this apple pie is every day. Every single day, because an apple a day will keep the doctor away. There's so many things that makes this special. First of all, there's spices in it, tons of delicious chai spices that I toast first before I grind fresh. Then there's rum, right? Rum makes everything better. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is pulling out my pre-made pie crust. I'm gonna just put a little flour down just to make sure that when I roll it, it doesn't uh, become a pie table, you know? I'm going to start adding my dry ingredients to my mixer. I have some all-purpose flour, flour sugar, sugar, salt, cake flour. I'm just gonna combine them. This crust is so delicious because there are two sticks of butter, butter which is really cold. Something nice about rolling it out a little is it also makes it look slightly more homemade. Level one chef, level three trickster. I don't want too much water in the crust. I want it to just come together. See how it sticks together? This is perfect. And I'm gonna start to add my water and my vodka. Most of the alcohol is gonna evaporate out and I end up with a drier, flakier crust. So I wanna make a two crust pie. I'm just gonna divide it. Get some plastic wrap. You want it to be round. You try to make it as smooth as possible. It's real easy. Crust is done. I'm just gonna work it by hand for a second. I'm gonna give it a little bit more love by hand. By wrapping it tight, I'm helping the flour fully hydrate. A minimum of one hour in the refrigerator, or it can sit overnight. 30 minutes, some flour on my board. I actually want the sides of the crust to drape over the pie pan. I'm mostly just gonna try to get this bit out because uh, it's a little bit weird looking. So this is half of my dough that's been chilled and rest in the refrigerator. First I start by beating this down and now I'm gonna roll. roll. I wanna roll the dough out pretty thin. Flour on the rolling pin. Ricky mistake, not flouring things. Big enough. I'm gonna spray with just a light coating of pan release and then to transfer it, I like to fold it in half, line up the half right in the middle and open it up in the pan. I love moving doughs and definitely not breaking them. You always see people do this because it just makes it easier. Make sure you have some hanging over this end, roll it back over the pan. So I'm just pushing it into the pie plate uh, to make sure that it's up against the edges. Lift it up, let it fall back down into the pan. This is gonna go back in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Let it sit for about 20 minutes or so to let that gluten rest. Now I'm gonna be crimping my outer edge of my pie crust. We're gonna make our egg, egg wash. wash. The egg wash is gonna be glue. We we'll start with an egg, a little milk. A little bit of water to loosen it up. The way that I'm gonna decorate this top is to kind of make it look like a blooming flower. And I'm gonna start cutting out my petal shapes. Okay, so these have had a few minutes to chill out in the fridge. The egg wash here is gonna allow them to stick to each other and stay in place. There's naturally little small air pockets between the pieces, so you don't have to cut any air vents in the pie. Layer up three together to look like the bud of a flower. A little more standing up, and that's the top crust of my pie, ready to chill and firm up. All right, so my next step is I'm gonna make the mixture for my crumble that'll go on top of my pie. I'm just gonna mix together flour, brown sugar, cinnamon, and butter. I do not believe that this is something you can overmix. Black pepper, allspice, clove, star anise, green cardamom, and cinnamon sticks. I really just want to start to bring out the aromas, transfer them into the spice grinder. Ginger is what makes chai tea spicy. We're gonna use clean water and sugar, a little pinch of salt. After it comes to a boil, we're gonna turn it off and let it sit for about two hours or so. I use Fuji apples because they are very tasty and they work well for pies. The golden delicious are sweet and soft and the Honeycrisp are very crunchy. What I like to use are Granny Smith's and Gala Apples and Jonah Gold. I'm gonna use this awesome contraption to peel them and slice them and core them all in one go. This is tough because I'm really slow and bad at peeling. I'm gonna try to core this now because if I don't know how to use this core, I need to find out immediately. <laughs> I can use kitchen tools. I like to peel them all first, then I cut them in quarters. Then I just use a paring knife to get the core out. Each segment, I'll cut in thirds. 
Into my pan goes some butter. My vanilla bean is already split. Scrape the seeds out. Six grams of that spice mix. A couple of extra cinnamon sticks. All my apples are gonna go in. Raw sugar, sugar. vanilla, cinnamon, cinnamon nutmeg, nutmeg, and cloves. Flour, flour salt. salt, two tablespoons of lemon juice. So I like to put the zest of the lemon in as well as the juice. Just make sure all the apples are coated. The last ingredient is rum. So I'm gonna chill this down and then chill it overnight. I am just going to prepare my toppings for my pie. I've done it, they're prepared. Today we'll stick with whipped cream. Cream is nice and frothy. Some heavy cream and some milk, sugar and a pinch of salt. Put in some vanilla, gotta have some sugar. And we're gonna bring that up to a boil. Cream, skim milk, cane sugar, Egg yolks, vanilla extract. That's it, that's all that's in here. You just whip it until it's as stiff as you like it. The secret ingredient in this recipe is the caramelized white chocolate. Turn it off, and I'm just gonna use the residual heat from the cream to melt all that chocolate. And while I do that, I'm gonna add this rum. What goes better on a pie than ice cream? Nothing, nothing. Pour it out. We're gonna chill this overnight so we're able to whip it later. The next step is I'm gonna put my filling into my pie crust. I do arrange them. Like a little more uniform distribution is probably good for cooking. No slice is like the best slice and no slice is the worst slice. We're all just different slices who look different, you know? Make sure that you pack the apples in. You don't want space. I'm not gonna make it too tall because I think it'll explode. I like to put some butter right into the filling. Cold butter. I really want it to be kind of like extra crumbly in the middle. There's that candy ginger that I made earlier. Even with all of that boiling, it's still very spicy. Just want to make sure that it's evenly distributed. I want to use my egg, egg wash. wash that holds the top to the bottom. Lots of filling in this beautiful pie. Parchment paper makes it really easy to just peel it off. Just gonna roll the top under the bottom. A beautiful top. Now I wanna secure it to the edges. Make sure that you have slits in the pie for the steam. A little more egg, egg wash. wash. And I'm gonna sprinkle it with more of that demerara sugar. sugar. I'm going to bake this pie at 400 degrees for 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna turn it down to 375. After the pie is in the fridge for 30 minutes, you're gonna bake it on the lowest rack in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes at 425. After 25 minutes, you're gonna reduce the temperature to 350 for another 35 minutes. It's gonna go into a 375 degree oven from anywhere between 45 and 60 minutes. After it comes out of the oven, I'm gonna let it sit at room temperature for about an hour or so. So my pie's all done, look at that. Said it couldn't be done, but here I am with a pie. <laughs> Take a look at this beautiful pie. And here it is, this is my finished pie. It is time for me to taste it. Here we go. Mm. Okay, it's good. You get the cinnamon and the butter and the crumble bit on top. It's nice, it's a little crunchy. The apples are nice and soft and they taste like apple pie apples. I think the flavor makes it special. I think the ease of preparation makes it special. As long as you follow the steps, the easy steps, you get a perfect pie. It fires on every note. It hits the spicing and the warming and the sweet. It's got a little savory kick. It's got a boozy kick, which is super fun too. And if you're gonna eat dessert, it better be worth it. This is worth it. Let's see how each of our chefs made this classic American dessert. Emily used a convenient store-bought crust that only requires rolling. Pre-made crusts contain preservatives like butylated hydroxy anisole, a synthetic antioxidant that prevents fats from going rancid. Her crust also contains butylated hydroxy toluene, which helps to retain color in foods as well as hydrogenated shortening. Hydrogenation is a process where liquid oils are made solid by adding hydrogen atoms to double bond carbon systems in liquid oils, making them really stable with a very long shelf life. You'll also find flour, sugar, salt, 
and some preservatives like calcium propionate, which is an anti-molding ingredient. They're also pre-hydrated, so you don't need to rest the dough as both Beth and Penny did. Beth made a tender and flaky pie crust in a food processor. The flakiness of pie crust happens because the flour-coated solid fat particles form layers when the dough is rolled. And when it's baked, the water that was added, plus water from the butter, as both Beth and Penny used, turns to steam and lifts the sheets of fat and flour mixture that was created. Everything needs to be really cold. The water, the butter. Penny used some vodka in place of additional water. The more water you add, the more gluten is developed, which will decrease flakiness and make a tough pie crust. The vodka will keep the dough supple without participating in gluten formation. Penny also used a combination of all-purpose and pastry flour. Pastry flour is lower in glutenin and gliadin, so she minimized gluten development with this combination. We want to limit how much gluten we create. Both Beth and Penny rested their dough in the refrigerator. Pie crust is very stable and can be made ahead of time and refrigerated for a few days or even frozen for a few months. When rolling out the dough, you need a little flour on your bench to ensure the crust doesn't stick. But be careful not to add too much because if you do, the dough will become stretchy and shrink when baked. That's because you're working the gluten proteins too much. Apples are called palm fruits, which means the edible portion is the enlarged tip of a flower stem and the seeds are protected in the inner core. Most of the flavoring compounds come from fruity esters. Ethyl alcohol and acetic acid combine to form ethyl acetate, which is a common ester in most apple varieties. Emily used only Fuji apples, which are very sweet with a honey-like flavor, so she doesn't need to add as much sugar to her apple pie. I use Fuji apples because that's what the internet told me to do. She sliced her apples on the thin side, so they'll cook more quickly. The addition of cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves added complementary warmth to her pie filling. A splash of citric acid in the form of store-bought lemon juice added a bright, slightly tart note to her pie. This apple's got it going on, baby. Beth used a combination of Honeycrisp, which are bred to be very sweet, and Brayburn apples, which have a sweet tart flavor and a slightly golden flesh from the presence of carotenoids. So that combination of textures with the crust is gonna make this a really delicious, delicious pie. This combination alters the sweetness and texture and uses the same traditional flavor profile as Emily's pie. Like Beth, Penny used a combination of apples, including Granny Smith. The Granny Smiths add a lot of sourness and tang, which is balanced so the pie doesn't get overly sweet. John and Gold, which also have carotenoids, lending a golden color to the flesh of the apple, and Gala apples, which are sweet and have a pear-like quality. So when you mix them all together, it's a more interesting and unique flavor profile. Penny added star anise, allspice, cardamom, cloves, and black pepper, all which were toasted whole and then ground together, which is a combination of warm, toasty spiciness. She made candied ginger, which also adds some sweet spiciness to her pie, and also added cinnamon and rum for an additional punch to her flavor. It's a really good, high-quality rum I added at the end. In place of white sugar, Penny used Demerara, a partially refined cane sugar, which is brown in color and has a larger crystal size than white sugar. White sugar is just sweet. Demerara is coated with molasses, which adds a caramel mineral flavor, making your flavor profile more complex. Penny partially cooked her apple mixture, blooming her spices along with the apples, and then refrigerated it overnight. This allows for quicker baking when she assembles her pie, and it ensured her apples will be fully cooked. All of our chefs rolled their bottom crust and added their apple mixtures. Instead of a top crust, Emily made a crumble, which is sweet, crunchy, and delicious. This could turn out really great. What if it does? Oh my God, wouldn't we all be surprised? It has similar ingredients to a crust, but more sugar that is cut together with solid butter. Beth topped her pie with a rolled crust, crimped, and brushed with egg wash to ensure the edges were sealed. What makes this pie spectacular is the egg wash. She sprinkled sugar on top, which adds a crunch and visual appeal. Penny also sealed her crust edge with an egg wash and then added beautiful petal design on top 
creating a visual experience along with a wonderfully tasty pie. Emily started baking at 425 degrees and then lowered it to 375. This works because initially you need a very high heat to create steam and form the flaky crust. Emily's crust is not gonna be very flaky though, and it's on the thin side, so turning the oven down cooks the apples and doesn't burn the crust. She also covered her crust in order to help prevent overbrowning. Beth baked at 425 degrees for 50 minutes, while Penny baked hers at 375 degrees. Again, you need that hot oven to create steam in the crust to promote the all-important flakiness. All three chefs served their warm apple pie with a cold accompaniment. Emily went classic with smooth and silky vanilla ice cream. I'm not gonna make my own ice cream because let's be honest, you wouldn't wanna eat it. And Beth served hers with a homemade whipped cream flavored with sugar and vanilla. Penny made a creme parisienne, which is made by boiling cream, milk, and sugar and then adding caramelized white chocolate and rum, which itself has a high sugar content. It's almost like a whipped ganache and it's delicious. All three of our chefs took their own paths to creating this quintessential American dessert. And all three of these pies are absolutely delicious, no matter how you slice them.